Everybody. Welcome to the Black Filmmakers Matter podcast. And today we have the beautiful, most gorgeous Kyra Bell. Welcome, Kyra. Hello. Thank you for having me. And you look great. Let me, let me hold on, everybody. We need her picture a little. Let's get her. She's so pretty. I want her seen. Okay. So you're in Texas. What part of Texas? Houston, Texas, home of Beyonce. I have her on my shirt, but oh, wait. do you? Yes, I have on the Renaissance shirt. All right, Beyonce fans. Yes, <laughs> and I am a part of the Beehive. Yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> Kyra, what types of films do you work on? What's your specialty? So I have, well, I've worked on one film and a couple of TV shows. Um, but well, maybe two films, but they've all been like smaller films. I haven't done anything big, um, but mm -hmm. I have worked on like a semi big, um, TV show. Um, mm -hmm. but my film was a documentary. So I guess I say I'm well versed in documentaries. Um, but I have worked on a few like, um, scripted. Um, films as well as like a production assistant. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. And why, I like to ask my filmmakers this, why filmmaking? Like what was the pivotal moment when you said, I want to do that? Okay. So it honestly, honestly, this was never like my goal or my intention. Um, my film came about as a thesis project. So it was something that I had to do in order to graduate. And without it, like, I wouldn't have graduated. Um, I had the choice. Like, I didn't have to make a film. But I was already, like, the school that I went to was very, like, it was either you're doing TV or film. So, that, like, okay. you kind of had to pick. Uh, well, you didn't have to. But, like, that's what you saw most of the time. Right. So, I was just like, well, and I, in one of my classes, um, I did an editing project it was like a smaller version of my film and so for my thesis i just decided to expand on it so that's how mm -hmm. i sort of got into it and then just working a around like my friends who do film um it just kind of like inspired me to do it okay and so you like documentaries mainly yeah, I love. I would love to work on something scripted. I just haven't. Well, actually, I have. I so also for one of my classes, I had to. Uh, it was a script writing class, or I don't know, but we had to write a script, and I um, I wrote it, and I wasn't thinking that it was going to get like picked, but it got picked mm -hmm. by the class to shoot. And we shot it and it was horrible. Like, I don't like, I, I was, I was like, why did y'all pick this? Like, I literally just thought of something and wrote it down. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I would like to work on something scripted. I just, I just haven't worked on my own project that's scripted. I, I love the honesty because this is the only way we get to learn and teach. Right. I, I love your honesty. You. Um, can you tell me about a current project that you're working on right now? Uh, I'm not working on anything film related right now. Okay. Um, so let I, me ask you, can I ask you about, let me make sure I get the the heaviest crown. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Okay. Yes. So the heaviest crown is a documentary about black women in their hair. Um, I started it because uh, in grad school, I had, like just started wearing my hair naturally and like really embracing it. I used to wear it naturally before, but like it would only be like for the summer for like a short period of time. But like when I was in grad school, it was like January of 2019. I was, I was tired of wearing like wigs and stuff. And I was just like, I want to wear my real hair. I want to see what all I can do with it. And I wore my own hair like strictly from like January to I don't know. It was a long time. And, okay. and like being the only like black woman in my, well, so at that time I was also the only black woman in my um, graduate program. And wow. I just wanted to like 
do a project that would like showcase me and like my culture. So um, that's what the film, the film is about like the pressure that black women have always had with their hair. And it was supposed to be like natural hair, like with perms, like with weaves. Right. It mostly focuses on natural. And then we do have some talk about wigs in, in there, but yeah, it's mostly. Okay. Like, is it uh, private or is it no, it's um, public? public? It's on okay. Okay, it's on YouTube. Okay, so guys, once we finish here, I'll make sure, you know, you can connect with her and her information is on a ticker on the interview. Okay, thank you. Okay, so tell me about a dream project that you have in your mind that if you had the money, the people, the, like, you would do it. Oh, wow. Um, I haven't really thought about it, but it would be a scripted film. Mm -hmm. Um. Would it be drama? Would you be interested in what genre if you did a script it? Oh, it would definitely be comedy. I'm such a like oh, really? Okay. So I mainly get sci-fi, horror, or drama. Really? No. Yeah. So out of all the filmmakers, maybe two said comedy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm so sure. why comedy for you? Because, like, I'm the type of person that doesn't like to take life so seriously. Okay. Um, and, like, I want to watch something, like, that. It could even be a dramedy, but I want it to be more lighthearted than, like, sad or right. anything like that. Like, I want it to be something that's going to lift people's spirits. Yeah, that. and we need that. We need yeah. more of that now, right? Okay, so you have a Facebook, and what's your social media handles? Yes, so for the f film, the um, the Facebook is the heaviest crown, and the okay. the Instagram is the heaviest crown as well. Okay, so I have a good question for you. Okay. So in this industry, what do you feel is missing? Like some people say diversity, more color. What do you feel we need more of in this industry as a people in a community? I would say authenticity. Um, authenticity, nice. Yeah, because like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I just, I just like being around people who are real and like genuine. Yes. And then, like, if anybody comes to ask me, I'm gonna tell it to them straight. Like, this one film took a lot out of me, and I didn't know what I was doing. And so, like, for it to like evolve into what it did, like, I was very shocked, and I'm still shocked to this day. Um, but it just showed me that if I just like, if I put my mind to it, I could do it. And we hear that a lot, but it's really true. Like, you don't have to be, like, when I was in school, I thought, because the other people had backgrounds in film, and I was like, oh, I, I can't make a film because they've, they've worked on this for a long time, and they've right. been doing this. And I that was my start. Mm -hmm. And I just think that people need to show more of their authenticity so that people can see that they can attain something of that and like even the stories that are portrayed on tv mm -hmm. i mean i would say that a lot of them are authentic but that they, they're always adding that extra that's like no come on you you know that's not <laughs> gonna happen in real life so I, I think i think if we just make it more real like yeah. the industry itself and the stories we're creating that it would be better i love that answer i love it it's the only original only answer like that i love it <laughs> Um, authentic. You can't be authenticity, man. <laughs> okay. Um. So, do you have any future projects coming up? No, I, I, I don't have anything yet. Um, it okay. is something that I'm working on because a lot of people have been asking me. So, what's next? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I think that's the fun part. Yeah. To tell you the I, truth. I do want my next thing definitely to be scripted. Um, okay. Yeah. I just, well, tell me, do you have any advice for young filmmakers or new filmmakers or people who are not in your position or haven't learned what you learned? Right. I would just say to just do it. I think trial and error is the best teacher in yeah. Um, like whatever idea you have, like put it down on paper and try to execute it in the best way you know how, because you never know what could come of it. 
That's right, Kyra. Thank you so much for being on the Black Filmmakers Matter podcast and sharing your, you know, your thoughts and your work. Guys, please, please keep up with Kyra. And um, I, I have to say, I'm really excited about talking to these filmmakers. I'm meeting them from Texas, Ghana, Africa. And sometimes it gets emotionally overwhelming. It does. And I have to hold back tears because it's beautiful seeing these young people, you know, around the world with the same mindset, the same thoughts. Kyra, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm emotional. I, I love seeing young black people. I, I love it. Thank you. Going positive. Kyra Bell, thank you. Love you so much. Hope you come back. I hope I do too. Hope you come hope back, help us with these young folks. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And have a great Friday. Have a great weekend, okay? You too.